This is a case presentation of a laparoscopic cryoablation of a cystic renal mass in a transplanted kidney at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. In this video, we will review the clinical presentation of this patient and the operative technique of our laparoscopic cryoablation. The patient is a 35-year-old male with a living donor kidney transplant for end-stage renal disease from glomerular nephritis. He was found to have a complex cyst in his transplant kidney on ultrasonography which was further characterized with magnetic resonance imaging. The MRI demonstrated an enhancing nodule in the cyst, which was suspicious for malignancy. His past medical history included hypertension and end-stage renal disease, for which he was on hemodialysis for two years. He also had a history of an open appendectomy. His imaging revealed a 3.1 centimeter partially exophytic complex cystic mass in the upper pole of his transplant kidney. Notice the intimate relation of the bowel to the mass marked with the red arrow. The cyst had an enhancing 4 mm nodule after injection with gadolinium. In this T2 image, the axial view is seen and shows the mass to be posterior with small bowel adherent to the peritoneum over the transplant kidney, most likely from his previous abdominal surgery. Renal cell carcinoma in a renal allograft is a rare entity ranging from 0.2 to 0.5% in transplanted kidneys. There is a higher risk of developing a tumor in the native kidney than there is in the renal allograft. Several treatment options exist, including transplant nephrectomy and subsequent dialysis, partial nephrectomy, ablation, and surveillance. There are only a few case series reported on ablation of tumors in transplanted kidneys, but the outcomes appear promising in terms of cancer control and preservation of transplant function. Because of the anatomical location of the mass, with its close relation to bowel, a percutaneous cryoablation could not be safely attempted. It was decided to perform a laparoscopic procedure to better visualize the mass, and a cryoablation under direct vision and sonographic guidance. Once the laparoscope was placed inside the abdomen, dense adhesions were seen overlying the transplant kidney. The adhesions were taken down with the laparoscopic shears. The small bowel was carefully mobilized off the posterior aspect of the kidney. The extraperitoneal space was entered, exposing the cystic renal mass. Once the mass was exposed, a laparoscopic ultrasound probe was used to visualize the mass and delineate its borders. Next, three cryoablation probes were inserted under direct vision, then advanced under sonographic guidance. The probes were placed in a triangular fashion. After appropriate placement was confirmed with ultrasound, a 10-minute free cycle was performed, followed by a 5-minute thaw, then another 10-minute free cycle. Once the cryoablation was completed, hemostasis was checked. Absorbable hemostatic gelatin foam was placed over the cryoablation site. Next, an oxidized cellular polymer material was placed over the foam. A number 10 Jackson Pratt drain was inserted through an existing trocar site. The patient was admitted to the urology floor for his postoperative care. He had an uneventful hospital course and was discharged on postoperative day 4. His serum creatinine remained stable postoperatively. This concludes our presentation on a laparoscopic cryoablation of a cystic mass in a transplant kidney.